Hello and welcome. My name is Carl Hurst Meridium and we are back again to do a GMDSS safety video. This video is about installation and we're going to start with an unboxing. So right here we have an LT3100S, the Meridium GMDSS terminal, and we're basically going to un unpack it, see what it does. Okay, let's get started. Got my knife, stand back. Safety first. So here we go. Packing. Don't need that. More packing. Don't need that. Uh, antenna cable. <clears throat> terminated on one end and not terminated on the other end. Makes it easier to install, push through bulkheads, things like that. Um, flanking plate for mounting to a wall. Um, so flush mounting we call that. Very important for flush mounting. Uh, Antenna termination kit, so you've got one unterminated end, so you actually have to terminate it or put a plug in it basically is the other uh, explanation of terminating. And they've actually given you two um, plugs, I guess, in case you mess one up. Good. Uh, <clears throat> right, here we have antenna mounts. So when you're mounting the antenna, you can get a vertical pole, um, and then you put one of these on there. They're different sizes, so different pole. Um, diameters so obviously they're important once you have the mount on the top of the pole you can then screw the antenna onto it and then plug in the antenna cable so they're quite important right the main box make sure I don't drop it get rid of that okay done uh, right here we go um, manual very important very thick, huh. a lot to learn. Make sure you read that cover to cover. I know I did. Okay, so we have the antenna, very important. Um, lots of key features about the antenna, which I'll go through in a second, but obviously very important. That's the bit that goes outside the boat in the weather. Uh, handset, you need that to talk to people. Um, obviously key. Uh, here we have the control unit. Obviously, again, very important, especially the big red button. We love that, when you're in distress, no other time. Don't press it if you're not in distress. Otherwise you will get in distress, they'll beat you up. What else we got in here? Aha! Mounting, uh, so this is when you're not um, flush mounting. This is to have it on a bench. I'll show you that later. Uh, handset mount, so you screw that to the wall and then you put the handset in. Power cable. We definitely need power, so don't lose that. And oh, and these are the screws for the mounting bracket, so very important. All done. Okay, so we're back now. We've got everything nicely laid out, so you can see all the different components. We'll start over here with the antenna. So here it is. Um, it's a traditional size for GMDSS equipment. Um, the really cool thing is all of the key components for communicating with the satellite network are in here. Antenna, power amplifier, um, the uh, radio, satellite radio. It's a bit of a non-traditional, uh, more advanced design. Because all of those key components are here, we don't have to worry about problems with the antenna cable. Um, traditionally, you are limited to antenna cable lengths of about 50 meters, but because um, it's not sending uh, RF or radio frequency through the antenna between the control unit and, and the antenna, it's just communication, so it's using a protocol called um, uh, Ethernet over coaxial. Uh, it's very forgiving, so uh, very resilient. Key considerations with this terminal, uh, or this antenna, I should say, is radiation. So big sticker here saying don't put it near your head. It's okay, it's not on. It doesn't, doesn't worry if it's not on, but if it is on, obviously keep clear of it because there is a radiation hazard about half a meter, about that. Antenna cable length is key, so that means you can get it high and clear. This is really important. Um, this is a piece of life-saving equipment. It could be your life that you're depending on with this equipment. Anything physically or electronically between this and the satellite could potentially cause a problem. So my view is keep it high, very high, the highest, and keep it clear. Um, not only to the horizon, so 
um, 180 degree view in all directions, 360 around, um, but even a negative view because when you're pitching and rolling, um, it is a very solid and robust system, but you need it to work in the worst of conditions. So if you need it, you need it in uh, you know, bad weather, then you, you want it to work first time every time. So that's a key consideration. Um, antenna cable, this is the standard one. I think it's about 25 meters. It's terminated on one end, not terminated on the other. So you can put it through bulkheads and cableways. And there's a termination kit there to terminate the cable. Uh, mounting, uh, we have two mounting brackets here. Um, as always, you should use a certified installer to install this equipment. So he will know how to use these, but you have a 1.5 inch or a two inch um, pole mount put it on top of the pole, screw the antenna in, and then you can put the cable into it, then it's securely mounted. But um, obviously uh, there are a number of different uh, sizes there for different situations. Moving on to the control unit. Okay, uh, hopefully you recognize this. Um, we have all the different buttons, the keypad, directional keys, enter, back, um, green for pickup, put down, menu, these dynamic keys for the screen, and the big red button. Um, so fairly self-explanatory. Um, also on the front here, this connector is for the handset. Come back to the handset. Um, the interfaces, LAN. So if you want to connect the terminal to a LAN or a laptop or something like that, you can then uh, access the uh, terminal through a web GUI or web interface. There's many different features through the web interface. Um, you can view maritime safety information, send SMSs, access the phone book, you name it. Um, you can also do admin features, configuring it. Um, you can set up the tracking system, very important. Very cool, the tracking system as well. Um, if you send it to, to uh, human readable format, um, you can actually send a SMS to someone on shore. In the SMS, there's a little Iridium link, and when they click on that link, it actually puts your position on a map um, so they can see exactly where you are on a map. Um, so some really cool features through the, the LAN. Um, IO port is next. I.O. input output. Um, so some of the things we have there is the uh, external ringer. Some vessels are quite loud, hard to hear. So you can have an external ringer, big bell that lets you know the phone's ringing. Um, if you want to connect to other devices um, or send information from this terminal to other devices, you can send things like GPS um, in an RS-422 format. You can send GPS um, so you can send position to another um, ship system. You can send uh, bridge alert monitoring alarms or BAM. Um, and you can also send things like maritime safety information to a plotter or an ECDIS. Um, and so that goes through the RS-422 as well. Um, and, and obviously on the IO port. Uh, next one is power. Pretty key. You need power. Not going to work without power. Power cable. Um, two wires, black, red. You should know, if you don't, obviously always use an installer, they will know. Um, and obviously the power cable plugs in right there. Uh, next connector is the antenna connector. Um, so that actually screws onto this fitting here, end type. Last one is the earth connector. So obviously you should know what you're doing with earth, but always use um, an installer, certified installer. He will always know what to do with that. Um, handset, so as I said before, go back to the front here. Handset plugs in here. The handset is, uh, looks rather simple. We have a volume controller on the side here. Um, it's in its mounting bracket right now. So it's just magnetic. Um, you cannot pull the handset out by pulling it that way. It won't work. You've got to tap it that way to get it out. So trap sometimes for people. Um, they think it doesn't work or won't come out. It's all in the technique. Um, but yes, very cool bit of kit, the handset with its noise cancelling um, technology. Now, on to the next part, which is mounting. So we have a mounting bracket here for mounting it on a bench like this. Um, so you can just put the um, control unit into the bracket like that. You can use these screws to secure it on the side and lock it in place. It's ratchety, so you can move it around, um, change the attitude. You can also uh, mount it from the ceiling, if that's where you want to mount it inside your vessel. So many options with the mounting bracket, that's what you want to do. Um, the other mounting option, oh, and of course, some screws for the bracket go here. 
Um, the other option is what we call flush mount. So if you can imagine, this is the wall of your vessel. Um, so that way, um, you would cut a hole in the wall of your vessel. You put this um, flush mount on the wall of your vessel, uh, and then you can connect the control unit to it, and it's flush with the wall. So no wires visible or anything like that. So if that's what you want, you're gonna need the flush mount. That is pretty much it. Everything that you need to know about the system is in the instruction manual, so you should always use an authorized installer, certified installer, to install this equipment. It is life-saving equipment, so it needs to be done correctly, um, and there's also a commissioning process that needs to be done by them as well. So that's pretty much it for the unboxing for now. So thank you very, very much for watching. As always, if you want more information, please go to iridium.com. And please like and subscribe. We appreciate your support.